Hey. <laughs> that was that was nice. That was spooky. Hey. Yeah, I know, right? I'm um, here. Hey guys, what's going on? Baby, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the show. It is Saturday night. And it's live. That means party. Party time. It does mean party time. Uh, I, I know we didn't talk about this up until, like, now. Mm -hmm. Because we've just been so busy this week. But we're going to talk about audio control today because, well, we, we ran into a situation yesterday that we thought we were, uh, you know, whoa, hey, hey, didn't realize that. But totally saved our butt and made our lives better. So, Audio Control being a sponsor of the show and allows us to pick the days in which we get to let them sponsor the show. I thought today would be a great day to talk about one of my favorite amplifiers, the D4.800. Yes. Because this made our lives, although stressful, for about five minutes. Thank you to Matthew Palumbo for Less than five minutes. holding my hands yeah. and then me figuring out that I made a mistake. And yeah. because of that mistake... Uh, I was freaking out, and then once I figured out the mistake, thanks to Fernando going, hey, you didn't, what, what, I was like, <gasps> all better. So tonight we're going to talk about some of the features on the D4.800 some of you guys might be interested in. Um, now a lot of the features we're going to talk about are go all the way across the whole audio control board, so it doesn't matter if it's a D4.800, a D6200, the DM608, the DM810, the new soon to be released D. 5.1300, That's right. or any of the other DSP amp products here for now and coming in the future. And that's the save feature. The save feature is one of the most important features of any DSP. Doesn't matter whose name's on it, you, you gotta have the save feature. And the save feature is something that can cause you a lot of grief if you don't learn to use it on a regular basis, meaning all the time. Go ahead. No, 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 no. go ahead. Okay. I'm just reading. So let's let's we're gonna spend we're gonna do a DSP Saturday. So we're gonna spend a couple minutes talking about this. So if you got great questions, by all means, just save them for a little bit and let us bang through this real quick. And then we'll take and we'll just do tons of questions on the backside. Okay. So let's have some fun with DSP today because we know we love DSP. First off, Fernando, let's take a closer look at what we got. We're gonna switch the Fernando cam. So. We have the really close D4.800. This is a version two, and I know you guys are going, wait a minute, version two? Yeah. I didn't know there was a version uh, hang two. Hang on, It's like I was zooming in before. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> so if you'll notice, there's this cool blinky thing right here. This is the ACBT24. The original D4.800 was not capable of using this. So they quietly and slowly did a rev to the unit re-engineered the whole amplifier because they had to move all your high level inputs and came out with a revision too and slowly but surely released that to the public. So mm -hmm. now if you buy the D4.800, it will have the option port. The ACBT24 does two things. One, it allows you to use an iPad to do your tune instead of the laptop that we have sitting here. Yeah. This one, pan back, pan back. This, this beautiful laptop sitting here. Okay, you, you can use the iPad or your iPhone to tune the device. I'm an, a, a laptop guy, but the second thing that it does, and the really, sorry, really cool thing, is that it will stream audio to it. Mm -hmm. Now, why is this important? Well, if you've got a factory radio that has otherwise not cool audio, and you don't have like an Amp Pro or an AR or a Zen or something like that to get a clean signal out of it, and it's really bad, like mm -hmm. it's just really bad, and, and there's nothing you can do. Well, you can get the BT24 yep. and change to that as a source. Yeah. All right, so now you can stream from your phone into the amplifier. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. Yeah. So we're gonna show you how to set that up on this amplifier because there's a lot of questions about how that's done and what you can use to do it. Um, there are two ways to switch. You can buy the AC3 base knob, which you just tap and turn, mm -hmm. or you can do it through the smartphone app that is now compatible since you have yep. the BT24. So there's two ways to switch between it. We wanna talk about setting up the DSP to do that along with save features because Save features are important. <laughs> All right, let's shoot over to the All laptop. Right. Let's take a closer look, and it is gonna be this laptop. All right, let me get rid of the little lower third right here. All right, so that's gone. So now what we're looking at is the full full board. 
And I'm gonna change the location of our, there we go, we'll move that, us down here into the bottom corner. Across the top of the DSP, you see where it says inputs, outputs, and memory. Hold to store. All right. First thing we wanna do is we've labeled everything. We have one set up for car and two set up for BT24, but we haven't programmed it yet. We're gonna go through and set up inputs one or front as our front input that's coming into the input here. So input, we're doing a standard hook on this, something that is just front, rear, sub. Real basic, nothing over the top. We have rear setup, we have front high is nothing, or is it? Hold thoughts. Go to the output view, we've set that up, front as front, rear as rear, and then our sub output, we're gonna feed that off of the front because that is our fuller range signal. We've gone in, we've added in our crossover for both, which is located over here. Crossover, it says Linkwix Rally by default. So we have our 80 hertz high pass. We're going to, let's say, a set of six and a half components passively. We have our rear speakers. I tend to put those up a little bit higher. We've set in our time alignments for all four corners. And then we've already done the tune. So if we scroll down here to the bottom and we look at this, we could see there's our rear tune. And if you, I'm sorry, this is channel two tune. We click here, this is channel one. So channel one is driver, channel two is passenger. Whoa, no, don't do that. Sorry, track pads, Ugh, big fingers, not really. Anyways, if we go to rear, rear if you notice is rear dash four, that's a dash and that's not a minus. So it's just dash four. On the rear, we typically EQ those as one set of, uh, one tune, meaning we don't do a left, we don't do a right, we do a mono tune, uh, get it where we want it, and we move on because it's just for effect. And then for sub, I like a little bit of boomy bass. This is just a glitch, but you would never see that, so we'll put that back to zero. I like to add a little bit of impact to it. Uh, we're still pretty low on that. That's if you're amp, you know, I like, I like fat bass, okay? It happens. So we'll come up here to this. It says hold to store. Can't grab your Fernando cam. Mm -hmm. So when that means hold the store, what you're gonna do is come back. All right, you need to put both fingers, two fingers, two fingers on the trackpad until it comes up and says this on the screen. I'll go back to the laptop. It says, are you sure you wish to overwrite memory one location? No is on left, yes is on right. This is important because there's another option that'll pop up and that'll be reversed. You don't want that one, you want this one. So you say yes, please wait. What that's done is that's now baked everything into preset one, but you still haven't saved it yet. Meaning if, if your amp goes boom right now and you have to take advantage of that awesome five year warranty, well, you're gonna have to retune the system because you weren't able to back it up. So to back it up, right up here where it says file manager, you have the drop down arrow and there's save as and save. So we'll select save as. It says parameters have changed, you wish to save them. This is just a, this will always pop up, so don't stress out about it, say yes. Okay, now on this, I've actually already created a page. So this, this right here is, is my file that I wanna save it as. You can label it whatever you want. I use a simple setup. I use the date, meaning zero month so if it's february it'd be zero two the date 13 and then the year 2021 i spell it all the way out and if you look here in my files they're all like that this allows me to easily go back in oh remind me tomorrow yay windows you can do this on a mac we just store it all on a windows machine it makes our lives easier I also put in the color of the car and the make of the car. So blue F-150, black Tundra, uh, black Tundra with Rail, white F-150 Platinum. You could write, if it's your DSP, you could write, you know, test tune on a Tuesday, whatever you want. Just so you pick what you want and then you select save and then say yes. Now that's gonna go ahead and save everything that we just did. If you're in the same tuning process, meaning you haven't shut the unit down, you haven't turned the key off, you haven't done anything, if you come back up to your file manager, you'll see just basic save. You can just click that 
and that'll keep saving it while you're in that one tune session. As soon as you either turn off the car or disconnect the software from the laptop, that save feature will go away and it'll be replaced with just save as. You can type in the number again, you know, the 0145, whatever your thing is, and then direct it to that folder to save it there if you want to. Or you can create a whole new tuning session, whichever works for you. Now, the advantage of doing this, and this is where it saved our life this week. We had a gentleman come in, drove all the way here. He had a bad 4.800. Yep. It was about two years old, I think. Mm -hmm. And it, it just it just gave up the ghost. It, Actually, he, he, he said he made it home this oh, morning at 6. For all you guys complaining about driving, he literally drove here from Ohio, had us replace the yep. amplifier, reflash it, and then drove back home. Yes. To Ohio. Yeah, to Ohio. He's nuts. So thank you, Chris. Big love, We happy man. that you made it home. Big, big love. But yes. he's the one that spurred this. So what What's we that, did, Noah? So what we did is got the amp in, pulled his amp out, put it back in the box. He's going to take care of the five-year warranty portion of it. Mm -hmm. That was cool because he actually didn't buy the amp from us. Not important. Put the new one in, plug the laptop in. He bought it in October, or he was here in October when we did his last tune. Mm -hmm. This is actually the third or fourth time he's been here. So we had an original system in it, and then he wanted to change it. We put new speakers in, so we did another tune. So the mm -hmm. last tune we had done on it was in October. So easy enough, I plug my laptop, I, I, we put it all in, and then all we have to do is come in here. I'm gonna reset this, we'll shut this down, and then we'll, that, that killed that session. Mm -hmm. We'll open this back up. When you start up the DSP software, it's gonna start, it's gonna connect. This is a new feature, by the way. It automatically goes to the server. And the reason why it's doing that is checking for updates. Now it will, go ahead. Uh, Steven, just, just save your question. We're gonna go to the question as soon as uh, we're done with this. Yeah, let us get through this and then yep. we'll get to the answer questions. Gonna we're gonna get through this about 15, 20 minutes and then yep. we're gonna go back to the radio show. This is just, this is DSP Saturday. We're having some fun with it. Okay. With the software now loaded back on, we typed in our password. If this was a bone stock amplifier never been used and we've got that saved information, we click on here. See now it says we instead of save as, we select open. And in this case, let's say that 145. Oh, see I didn't type in the zero. Zero one four five. And there's my tune right there. If I select open. This is gonna load that software onto my amplifier now so that I don't have to lose it. It's gone, it's, I didn't, we didn't have to freak out, we didn't have to do anything. All that time we spent tuning his car is right here in the laptop. You could put it on a thumb drive, move it to whatever computer you want, um, but it makes things really simple to do. Once it loads back in, you have mm -hmm. to do one more thing. Is it dark? What do we got? Uh, dark and spooky? It's kind of blurry. I hope it's not that blurry. Oh, what's, I mean, what's in my in, in my feed, it looks fine. So it's your internet. All right, so it's done loading in. Yep. Now, this this is where the fun starts. Okay, so you come over here and you go to output view, and you're like, oh gosh, what happened? Wait a minute, there's something wrong here. And I, and I scroll down to the bottom. There's no EQ. What? Oh my! Oh my God! That's what happened. That's, oh, that's exactly oh what you did. <laughs> my hair is falling out of my head. What? What? Why? Why? Cruel world. What happened? Well, simple enough. And actually, Fernando's the one that caught this because I was too much in a panic thinking I got to spend another two hours retuning this car. Right. If you'll notice here in the dashboard view, four is what is highlighted. We weren't set up in four. We were actually tuning in car. So if we come over here and we switch the car, boom, there's our tune. It's all back. Yeah. That is something that audio control didn't realize that that's how it does that. So crisis averted, panic stopped, and your tune is where it needs to be. So what you're saying is it like, hey, slow it down. Slow it down. And then... Thank you for Matthew, <laughs> though, because he was really cool oh, on yes. the side. And yeah, it all worked out in the end. So yeah. now. We have that BT24, yep. and we're like, man, we really want to use this. What do we do? Well, this is where it gets interesting. Something to keep in mind on the BT24. 
If you have an existing radio like that has line level output, so you're feeding this DSP amplifier a full range signal. Mm -hmm. There is no roll off, there is no de-equalization being done. It's just a really, like you have an amp pro or something that is feeding in or a Zen and like it's all set and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Well then there's no extra tuning you need to do to go to the BT24 because you have a flat signal coming into the amplifier, you've EQ'd it to the car, now you're gonna go to your Bluetooth dongle. If you have an existing factory radio that you had to do de-equalization on or you had to fix some nonsense there, well then you have to do a second tune because now you have to tune it to the Bluetooth signal that is a full frequency. Mm -hmm. So for the sake of this and just showing you how this feature works, we're gonna assume that we were going from an Amp Pro into this and everything is hunky-dory. Hi. So back here, Hi, Chris. where it says we've labeled this already, but mm -hmm. if we click on it, nothing's there. Like there's there's no information happening. It's just the default. We have front, rear. So these are all the things. Well, we don't want that. So we're gonna come back to one, and now we're gonna do that two finger press. We're gonna do the two finger press on on the trackpad until it comes up and says this. And we remember we want yes. Yes on the right, we'll go back, you override, correct. Now, if you'll notice, it's the exact same tune as we had on preset one, which is exactly what we want. However, we're not there yet because it still says your inputs are front and rear. The BT-24 doesn't come over front and rear. The BT-24 actually comes over front high. We need to select front high for channels one and two, channels three and four, as well as our line out. Once we've done that, come back over and do your two finger save. Yes. And now it's saved. So now preset number two has your EQ setting on it. We can go back to front and we come down here. It's easier if you grab the toolbar on the side. And there's our tune. There's channel two. And we can now stream music into the DSP amplifier over preset two. Mm -hmm. If, like I said, if you need to switch back to preset one, you can either use the AC3 or you can use the smartphone app that is now at, gives us access because they have the BT24. One other power move here. Oh, wrong laptop. One other power move. If you'll notice, I have it where it says backup one and backup two. We're gonna do an even odd thing. So backup number four, we're backup, um, preset four, backup two. We're gonna press and hold. And we'll say yes. And what that is gonna be is that is going to be preset two and four are the same. Why? Why is that when you're using that AC3, and you have to go one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Instead of having to go one, two, three, four, every time you go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, you have your same presets. Because you can't, you can't not select right. that. Yeah. So we go back to preset one, yep. and we'll hold for preset three, mm -hmm. and we'll click yes. And now preset one and preset three are exactly the same. This allows us to hit the button turn, we're in preset two. Hit the button turn, we're back in preset one. Hit the button turn, we're in preset two. Hit the button turn, we're in preset one. Hit the button turn, we're in preset two. Yeah. So now if we're using the AC3, it's only there's not an open open dock there. The other thing you can use that to, you don't it's nice to you can make four presets. If you make a preset one that is like, hey, this is what I love, this is what they gave me, this is the one I like. If you make preset two an exact clone of it, and then you go in and you tweak a few things, you still have preset one to fall back on. The last thing you're gonna wanna do, the last thing you're gonna wanna do before you decide to call it a day and close up is come back down to file manager, select save, because we're still in that same operation. Mm -hmm. Select save, and it's done. We've yeah. saved it, it's there. All four presets are now saved. What happened? Oh, no, I mean, you want to show the Oh, you got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, hold on, I'll, let me. I let got me... this one right there. 
Oh no, I can just unplug this and plug it in. Yeah, because we're done with the laptop, so I can just unplug the laptop. Hold on while we make a change. Get your questions ready, guys. We're almost to that point. Okay. This is a stiff cable. That's what she said it is. Okay, so you're plugged in. All right, let's go back to here. So this is the audio control app. Mm -hmm. It's not connected because he hasn't paired to this dongle yet. No. But if you notice across the bottom, That's your four presets there are your right four there. presets right there. And you can label those yep. as well as master level control. Now, one of the cool features about this, mm -hmm. the master level control, is you can turn the stuff down so that if you accidentally give your car to someone else to drive it, turn the shit down so they don't break nothing. Yep. Yep. That's right. All right. Power move. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for letting us talk about audio control, and thank you so much. Why don't you clear this off? I'm going to yeah, yeah. finish with the ad here so that we can uh, get on to the next exciting question. Thanks some more, guys. So let me go over here to the laptop. We want to thank audio control for being a sponsor of the show. If you're interested in the 4.D 4.800 or the new LC 5.1300, the ultimate, the baddest, the new hotness five-channel amplifier, that's right, the one that Fernando says... <gasps> Oh my gosh! This is the this is the this is the yes. Uh, this is a PDX V9 killer. Um, if that interests you, or you just you know you want to learn more about audio control, make sure you head over to audiocontrol.com. That is audiocontrol.com, and you know just browse around. Yes. See what they got. Check out the DMRTA. Big fan. All yes. right. Um, actually, um, 25 to live say, can you certify how good the five channel amplifier sounds? Can I certify it? Yes. I mean, I can put my label on and say that it sounds freaking amazing. Me too. Um, yes. If it you is. caught the unboxing video that we did of it, here's what happened. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the new uh, five channel amplifier. Mm -hmm. um, and let me go back here to car. I will, sh we'll, we'll pull it up so we can have it on the screen, power amplifiers. So when we shot the video, of course, we got one of the first. We got a first production run piece. So when when they're making the product, there's the gold master, meaning they finish it and they send out, all right, this is what we're going to be sending you as the gold master. So every one of them is gonna look exactly like this right now. Mm -hmm. They sent that to us, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Silly. We put it into Fernando's car immediately um, because we're like, we've been waiting for this thing for two years, yep. so why would we not do it? And we listened to it. And we really listened to it. And we've heard, as you guys know, plenty of systems in Fernando's car. We've done tons of amplifiers. We could immediately tell there was something different about this amplifier. Oh. Yes. Immediately, and it was flat. All the thing, all we were doing was using the crossovers, and yeah. it was just immediately though. As soon as we got done doing the, hey guys, have a good night. Thank you for watching. We called Chris. Yeah. Immediately called Chris. Chris, who was probably watching or was watching, will tell you. We called him immediately, and we were like, dude, what did you guys do to this thing? <laughs> like. And he's like, what do you mean? Did I was you like, put more salt? <laughs> yeah. Pepper? Something. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> and you know, this is this is so freaking awesome. And you know, we've heard a ton of amplifiers. Yes. It's not like we haven't, but there was something about hearing this amplifier um, that was generally like, oh wow. And that happens. I mean, it happens a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, or actually, it doesn't happen a lot. What I was gonna say, it's happened before uh, in Haley's car. When we did Haley's car that night, yep. um, yeah. I didn't call anybody because we didn't have anybody to call and it was also 12.30, almost one o'clock in the morning. So, you know, we were just giddy as hell like, Jesus, this thing actually works. This is so cool. So yeah, anytime we, more cheese. Yeah, that was under the back seat of the car that we were just working on. So anytime we do something, I was scared they were gonna complain. Mr. Chris Bennett right there. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Uh, but no, we were just blown away by the performance of the amplifier. I mean, it was it was amazing. But with that being said, as promised, we're about 20 minutes in. So let's answer some questions, guys. Start. We'll, we'll do the best we can. If we missed your question, don't worry. We'll be back here Monday. Same where we'll thing. do some more. Yeah. We Not be, here on Facebook, we'll be but on yes. Facebook and Instagram and all that. Same but, in the camera. But I'm going to tell you guys right now, we won't be here next Saturday. There's no That's show right. next, Saturday. next Saturday. Dean's uh -huh. got plans. So, yeah, with that being said. All right, uh, Dean. Yes. The home unit I was talking, or I was looking at getting, at getting is the Concert XR8. 
Oh, okay. Oh, Mario. Uh, that's Chris. Dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I don't remember which one they sent me. Um, I'm dying to put it in though. I still haven't put it in because we're we're getting ready to have our living room redone thanks to the ants that attacked us before Christmas. So yeah. All right. Let me see. I got. All right. Let me let me steal the mouse from you. Yeah. And then you can scroll up and down. I'm not getting the third five through because of the beautiful master volume piece you made. So I'll wait for that. Of course. Eight channel amps from audio control. When? All right. I'm five, buying two, four channels right now. Mm. <laughs> I'm buying the 61200. What is a good set of three way that matches to the power output? It's a 2017 Chevy Colorado Crew Cab SQ Bill. So, all right, let me let me let me back it up just a little bit. We're going to talk about the D61200. One thing to note about the D61200 is it's six channels of output in I'm sorry, six channels of input mm -hmm. or output of power. Yeah. Output. It's six channels of output power and mm -hmm. it has one RC output that is assignable as a subwoofer, mm -hmm. okay? Why that is important is if you're just going to do a three-way set up front and a subwoofer, kudos, do it. If you're mm -hmm. planning on doing anything else, like you want to have rear fill in your life, then do the LC and do the, DA, uh, and do the DM810 as an outboard DSP processor. So just something to think about. As far as speakers that can match up to that power, Man, we've put a ton of stuff on that. Uh, we've put anywhere from uh, pretty much every Morel. I mean, mm -hmm. I know right now um, the Mark from iData has the D6200 powering yes. his... Morels. Yeah, he has the Elates. Elates. He yep. has an 8-inch in the door and a 2 in tweet. He had MTI make him 8 pillars. Mm -hmm. So he has 8-inch in the door, a 2 and a tweet. Or the, I'm sorry, the, the mid-range 3-way set. So yeah, it's the a 3-way, huh? He wanted the late three-way set, but he substituted out the six for the eight. Um, we've done K2s on there. We've done full cow flax on there. We've even done T2 Rockfords on there. It's a ton of power and it's very versatile. So it, it's 120 watts times six. It'll power anything you want. I mean, it'll power mild to wild. Yep. Just go crazy. There's a awesome. game control, so, and an EQ. You can just have all kinds of fun. Hi from Las Vegas. What's up? I have the 1070 XR on my RAM. What amp should I get? I mean, the show is brought to you by Audio Control, so I would say head over to audiocontrol.com. If you have the four-door RAM, which mm -hmm. I'm assuming you do, because like, who buys the two-door? Where we like to put the amplifiers in those is if I'm sitting right here, if I do 180 and I look down towards the floor, all the way down towards the floor to the back is a great place to put the amplifiers. The audio controls are one of our favorites for that car, mainly because it allows all the power wire, cut to the cam for a second. Yeah. As you'll notice here, all the power wire comes out of one side. So this is towards, uh, pan up, pan back. This is the back of the vehicle. This is the front of the vehicle. We can slide this amplifier all the way towards the back. Our power wire is gonna come out and move towards the front. We don't have a lot of width, so we don't want to take up extra space going out to the sides. So when buying an amplifier for that vehicle, if you're gonna use that same mounting option that we do, try to find one that has power wire that comes out of the front. There are plenty that do that. Audio control is not the only one. They're just, you know, hey, it's audio control night. All yeah. right. 2014 Ford Focus with the Sony system. Yeah. I want to bypass the Sony system and add a five channel amplifier. Two yeah. weights up front, coaxes in the rear, and a subwoofer. What harness adapter would I need? Sony system. So you can go to pack-audio.com or iData. Mm -hmm. um, both of them are gonna make solutions for that. If you wanna keep your life simple, you can do the iData and go into the DSR-1, this guy right here. Both of those guys are gonna list the harnesses that you're gonna need for those. I don't know the exact model numbers off the top of my head, but pack-audio, idata.com are gonna be the two. You're gonna to wanna to look up the AR feature, or they actually make it real simple. They just say amplifier replacement. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me do this. Let me see, let me let me see. Uh, read a question and answer why I do All this. Right, okay. so you said 13 or 16? Uh, that's, you said 16. Uh, I say 16? I think you said 16. No, uh, 2014. 2014. 2014 for focus. For focus. Yeah. Uh, can I use the Bluetooth dongle to tune only? Yes. For online level install? 
Yeah. Yeah, you can. You, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, what kind of farm? Uh, Sony system. Dean, let's do audio control calendars giveaway. <laughs> uh, you got to tune in on Fridays for the news. All right, I'm gonna go over to my laptop for a second. So, 2014 Ford Focus, my touch, eight inch screen, Sony amplified system. You have two choices right here. You can do something that's AR compatible. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of equipment that is AR compatible. So for example, uh, on the wall behind me, we have the DSR-1 that is AR compatible, meaning the AR is built into it. We have the uh, Kenwood Exelon, um, PXR 606 DSP. It's a six channel amplifier with four channels of output. We also have the Bitnove. Um, either one of them would work if you decide you want to go with the DSR-1. The harness you need is located right underneath it is the AFO2. Yeah, AFO2. And that is, that's it, you're done. So you need an AFO2 and a DSR-1, plug those in and you have preamp. Rock uh, on. It's right. back at the amplifier, so you pull the amp out. Ben, I want to talk to you. Uh, he has a 2017 Mercedes ES. I have the Brewmeister system with the 13, 13 speakers. I want to oh, I want to upgrade it. So, if you call Monday, maybe you you can you can talk to I him. I can't promise yeah. anything. I mean, yeah. it's it's just a matter of how busy we are. Some days I have time, some days I don't. There's a list of people over there that I have to call back. Yeah. I got to call quite a few of them this week cuz we had I had like an hour and a half I wasn't doing something. Yeah. Um so, yeah, I mean just be, be patient. I mean, we're still booking a month and a half, two months out, so it's not like we're not going to get to it any time, like, right away. Ah, Dean, I got an adapter for my head unit, ISO plug, so it fits to the factory side. Is it okay if I connect a relay to this adapter? Yeah. I mean, you should be. I mean, if you're talking about, like, an accessory, yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. uh, James, hey, thank you for recommending... Uh the audio control epicenter. I installed it yesterday and it sounds awesome. Well, there you go. Best budget oscilloscope. If you're actually gonna be using it as an oscilloscope, you might wanna check into something like with a color screen like the 211. It's something something 211. But the best place to find like stuff like that is going over to DNF tool drawer. Um, DNF tool drawer, we do have a listing of tools like that. Hold on, meters and probes. Uh, Gracias, Noah. Las, las, este, las estamos usando el otro día. So over here you have the DS211 oscilloscope. This one is really nice if you're trying to, it's color, so it's easier to see. Obviously the Lumi style scope, uh, the Lumi's been replaced, but it's still the same basic thing. They just changed the name. Um, and then you could get a big t desktop one if you wanted. Those are the ones that we have and use. Um, but yeah. All right, I'm trying to find one that some hybrid like. or Morel. How about hybrid Morel? The Morel hybrids. Yeah, same. Yeah, that, um, that was good. I yeah, like that one. I mean, that's up to you, man. They're both two awesome speakers. It's just a matter of which one you know tickles your fancy more. I'm a big Morel fanboy. I'm not. I everyone knows that. So naturally, I'm gonna lean towards. Um, if those are my only two choices and I have to pick, I'm gonna go Morel just because I like Morel. Um, but I also love the way the hybrids sound. We have a couple customers that have them in their car, and I personally haven't had an opportunity. Well, I've only, I have tuned one, but that was years ago. Um, but I've heard them. They're great sounding speakers. So uh, I, it, it's like, which, which, which one? I, I don't know, man. All right. Uh, I've been trying to ask a question for a while about 2005 Acura TL install under the passenger seat is the SWS. How do you get the seat to move back without hitting the amplifier? Can I relocate the SWS? What car? Acura TL 2005. Ooh. I mean, I would relocate the amplifier. Well, whatever, what's SWS? I don't know what's don't SWS. Know. I mean, we I mean, try not to relocate stuff. We just put stuff someplace else. I mean, right. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. I mean, as much as, like, we don't get too crazy. If there's stuff underneath the seat, we're not going to... I mean, the uh, first time we do, every this. time we're going to do an install with the 
with an amplifier they want to put under the seat is like you put it on slice the seat see if it fits if you, something's gonna hit if you're not we just move on to someone we'll uh, do bobby yeah we just move on to a something. different location yeah yeah hello from the netherlands um what was it i, I just saw something that i wanted to uh flex two-way active in a silver out at three inch passives or replace tweeters with audio frog 2.5s okay hold on Flax 2A active in Silverado. Add a 3 inch passive or replace tweeters with 2.5. Oh, okay. So I see what you're saying. Um, that comes down to your skill level of. Okay, I have a better idea. I have a total better idea. All right. So on your Silverado, you have a two way flax system. Wonderful system. What should you add to the front? Simple enough. Nick Wingate, if you don't know Nick, he's Mr. Sound Quality. Um, he works for Orca, which is Focal. They make a company. They have. Uh, they own another company called Illusion. Mm -hmm. Illusion makes a three and a half tweeter. All right. So it's a three and a half with a tweeter in the center, biampable. If you're gonna do anything and you want it to like, you got power, and I would get those. They're not cheap, but if you get the Illusion, then you'll have a, th a true three-way set. And believe it or not, that's what he had in his car, his Silverado, when mm -hmm. he won finals three years ago. He had a set of Illusion three and a halfs, bi amped, meaning an amp for each one, and a set of Focal Flax mid bass. He started with Utopia Ms, and he liked the Focal Flax mid bass the best. I'm not saying you'll have the same results and that you'll win the sound competition. However, we know it's a proven workable thing. You might want to check that out. All right, budget RTA. I only need it long enough to tune my system. So something like the DM RTA isn't worth it for me. I'm tuning my D4.800. I test mic? I test mic. Yeah. I mean, I test mic's like, what, 100 bucks, 120 bucks? Yep. You test mic? Mm -hmm. You can get the U test mic. Um, it's cheaper. You and test mic or my test mic? You test mic. <laughs> so you get the U test mic from Audio Control. Um, do you know which box that's in? Is that in that box? Ah, man, you put stuff everywhere. Oh, yeah, man, you have a mess. You know, if you knew how to use a label machine. I, I don't know. Hey, this is a U-Test mic. It All is? Right. Yep. yep. All right, grab the camera. So this is the U-Test mic that you can pick up from audio control. What comes in the box is obviously... Come back just a little bit. Mm. Yeah, you get the microphone. There we go. You get the microphone in the box. And it has, it's a standard USB mic, but it also comes with a USB-C, it comes with an Android, it comes with a little tiny stand, it comes with a microphone holder, it comes with a little noise or windshield for on the front of it. And it doesn't come with a case, It doesn't okay? come with a case. You can pick those up at uh, your cheap tool store near you. And then, of course, it gives you all, on the back of the box, it gives you all the things that it's capable of doing. Um, you can download REW on Windows for free, uh, Smart Live on a Mac or Windows, Android apps. So this allows you to, and then of course it's compatible with all the stuff up here. Um, but this is a pretty reasonable mic. You can pick up. You gotta wait till I switch it back, man. You're gonna make everyone motion sickness. Hey, that's fine. I know. All right. All right, go ahead. All right. <laughs> Uh, have you guys come across any interface for 2019 Chevrolet Trax LT trying to install the uh, M4600 NEX? Try navtv.com. Nav-tv.com. Um, that is going to be the uh, place where we would go to find things like that. They're, they have the most up-to-date when it comes to uh, Chevy. So this is it here. Take a screenshot. These are all the places you're gonna find these type of parts from. So navtv.com. If there's one out there for the Chevy, that might be the one. Have you yet, have you guys used the new Morel Carbons yet? The new Morel? The Nanos, one? yeah. No, not the brand new version of them. We've used the older version of them. The only difference between the two is now they've incorporated the grill into the basket. All right. So it's the same speaker, 
It's just a new basket because the grill snaps in place and looks nicer. So we've heard the old one, which is the exact same motor structure, surround cone as the current one, and they sound amazing. Um, if you, the Morel Nano Carbon isn't enough mid-base, what would you, what would be the alternative? Go with the regular Virtus. I mean, it's 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 in the Virtus line, so. I mean, if you're if you're like hungry, hungry, hungry hippo for mid base, well then just go with a conventional depth driver. Um, it has mid base. There's no question about it. Like we said in the video, it's there. It's doing what it needs to. But you know, if you compared it to the regular Virtus, it's tough. I mean, there's it's it's almost it's right with it up to a point. Uh, if you'd like even more mid base, then check out the um, hybrids. Because the hybrids have even more. It's a bigger magna structure. Uh, those are, yeah. So, or yeah, go up to the elates. But I mean, now, now you're just getting silly. Hey guys. Yes. Uh, where do you normally tap for signal on cars that have front powered by a factory head unit and rears powered by factory amplifier? Put in a five channel amplifier. There's only like a handful of cars that have that. Yeah. Um, it all comes down to uh, we don't guess. So we don't have. So, so okay. So we don't have a factory subwoofer. I don't know. I don't. The thing is, is we don't guess. We're gonna test everything. everything so yeah. I, I can't answer that question without knowing what I'm looking at. So I'm gonna test everything, and whatever has the signal that I need to amplify is what I'm gonna connect it to. So. If for some reason, let's say that rear preamp output going into the amplifier was full range, and I, there's nothing on it that is gonna hurt me, meaning everything I need to, Bluetooth, all that fun stuff is all gonna play through it, I'm gonna use those. Mm -hmm. But if let's say front channels are the only channels that have the Bluetooth audio or for phone calls or navigation or sensors or something like that, well then I have to use those channels if I'm trying to do full range. You have to, you have to do the testing to figure out what needs to stay where? Uh, Adam, thank you for the five bucks, man. He says, I need an estimate for a bill. You gotta call Paul. Definitely call Paul. And you gotta be patient on that. And I so, will get back to you. Yeah, uh, Brian, uh, Miles, thank you for the five bucks, man. Hey, Dean. Uh, I know, I'm working on it. Hold on. Where is it? Hey, Dean, do you prefer your tweeters on top of the dash? in the corners or in the cell panels, Ooh. in the door, tanks? Mm. This is a good question because it really depends on the tweeters that I'm using. I'm not gonna lie. Depends on um, the tweeter that you use. Yeah, using. so basically what we're talking about, do we like them here? Yeah. You know, like they are in your car, my car. My car here. Do we like them up well, here, here? Which I kind of do sometimes. Like if I have a really wide tweeter, you know, a tweeter that plays down low, you know, like 2000, 2200, 2400, something like that, that plays really low, I kind of like it up there because it just moves that sound stage up really high. Sometimes when they're here, if they're too narrow, it just gets weird. You know, it's like they're. Uh... I like here. You like there? Yeah, it's just like. Yeah. Well, you like a really bright tweeter, so. Uh, I know. Okay. So the answer to that is we really don't know. Um, well, the answer is. I like it. That's I, what you like. Just, uh, yeah. This is what you like, right there. Whatever you said. All right. Okay. According to Crutchfield, 2019 Traxxas, this model will work with the Axis GMLS LAN 10. Ooh. That's for replacing the radio, though. That's not an amplifier. If you're looking to replace the radio, then yeah, that don't, that don't work. Right. Yeah. Uh, also, he actually said... Uh, yes? A drill to take seat bolts. Ah, uh, that's cheap. That is cheap. That uh, is not two hundred dollars. It's called a wrench with a pipe. Yeah, pretty much, man. Yeah, there, there is no. It's such, not a hundred dollars. There's not a hundred dollars to do yeah. it. To pull out seat bolts. Oh my God, no. We use this. We say less than hundred dollars. <laughs> this is what we use to pull out seat bolts, guys. Yeah, that's it. Because these things are rusted into place, and we just got tired of it. Yeah. And so I was like, I found the biggest, baddest impact that Milwaukee makes. We bought this and we haven't looked back. It is a beautiful thing to have. It is worth it, man. Oh, it is so, worth but, it. You I know, mean, you spend it, that. It's but okay. Ah, it's just like the other one that you have. Yeah, is the, mean, tiny one. the tiny it one. The tiny one. It might help. But it's yeah. not going to get that seat out. Right. All right. Uh, Bill, thank you for the 20, man. My car has a factory component. 
lower front door and dash. If you, I replace the speakers, do I need the new crossovers that comes in the box? It's a 2017 Audi A4 Nambio system. Yes, yes you do. Yes, there, you're going to need the passive crossovers that come in the box. Um, what you're gonna need them, f it, okay. First thing you gotta do is get the factory speakers out and see if you can, a lot of the times you'll look at the tweeter, there'll be a cap on it. There's a cap on the factory tweeter, there's no crossover in the system, meaning you're gonna need to use your aftermarket crossover. Most of the time there's a little tiny cap on the tweeter. And most of those systems, the mid base is on its own channel, and some of those systems, they're all on one set of channels, meaning that the six and a half, the th whole three-way set is all passive out of the factory radio. Um, something like that, yeah, you gotta go, you gotta put the crossover back in. There again, when it comes to systems like this, we don't play around. We test everything. Um, and I know it's one of those things that it's like we wish there was an alt an easy thing, you know, a tool that you could buy to, to test this stuff. But and there, there really but you still it. have to test it. <laughs> yeah. So I, mean, I, I I wish I had a better answer for you. But another th okay, just all right. Follow me on this one. Mm -hmm. All right. So the biggest speaker in the system okay. is, is the mid range, right? So if I take a door panel off, mm -hmm. this is something you guys can do. If I take a door panel off, I have no tools to test that. Okay. If it's a passive system and there is passive crossover somewhere in line, there again, those passive crossovers might not be what you need. So for example, if you're getting a Focal tweeter, it needs to be crossed over 5,000 hertz. Yeah. Uh, uh, a Morel tweeter is 2,400 hertz. So big difference there as far as the performance of the driver. But if I take my tweeter and I go down to where my mid-range was and I hook it up to that, and I get tweeter sound out of it, that's full range coming into there. If I take my mid range and put it up where my tweeter was and I still have mid range, that's full range up there. So that's telling you that you have full range signal all across the board. So if you flip the speakers and move them to places and you can still hear the same sound as where it was in the original, you have a full range signal, you're gonna need a passive crossover. Just keep the volume. And... Yeah, yeah, don't go yeah, crazy. Don't go the crazy with the volume. I mean, you know, Speaker is gonna. All right. So, yes. Is there a way to hardwire a backup camera if the previous camera was stolen and the wire were cut? Can I cut the RCA and power plug and hardwire it? Yes, but you'd have to have the pin out. Meaning you'd have to know what each wire goes to. So the other thing too is that depending on what type of camera it was and where the camera was connected. Most of these cameras that go into the cars aren't 12 volt cameras. Right. They're 12 volt in, but they're not 12 volt out. That's six. They're six volt. <laughs> so if you get that wrong, it's not gonna work. No, you're gonna blow the, the other camera. I mean, the, the, the smart money, as much as we hate this, like, we right. wouldn't do that. We would just run a new wire. I get it, it's a pain in the butt, but you don't wanna blow up your new camera. If you know what power, like if you have two wires ran back and this one is power and this one is ground and this one is signal and you know what they are, yeah, yeah, you can. Here's the problem though. When you have to solder those wires outside, unless you, if you do that, you're gonna have to have silicone shrink wrap because you have to water, they have to be water tight. I can't tell you how many guys have come in and they're like, man, you know, they're, they're trucks. And they're like, oh, my backup camera stopped working. We go underneath there and we find out like someone cut it at the dealership trying to do some kind of service. And then they just like butt connected it back together. And of course the water and all that has gotten into it. And I'm like, dude, this, you know, sorry. Um, they just did it wrong. So that'd be the only scary thing. That's why we just run a new wire. All right. Do you uh, want to do Oscar or you want to do Oscar? Hang on. Okay, hang, hang on. Hang, hang on with uh, that. Ah, uh, man, I need this question answered bad. Go. Fernando. Yes. How to cut the front doors to receive the six and a half? Okay. The best place for the app, IS under the passenger seat. What car? I think it's the IS. What is an IS? Uh, uh, Lexus? The best way to cut the front door? I, I, don't, I don't understand the question. Uh, all right, so six and a half by versus six by nine in the door speakers. Which do you prefer? I mean, if you have a six and a half, 
you're not gonna put a six by nine. No, I see in what there. you're saying. Well, you got the Utopia six by nines or the hybrid six. No, 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 no. We talk about the other ones. I'm looking at Joe's. Okay. Uh, no, 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 six by, Oh, okay. No, no, no. It's totally different. Uh, okay. Guy. Sorry, so, Mike. Six and a half for six by nine doors. Which do you prefer? All else being equal. Oh no, never mind. I'm sorry. It's a TL. Okay, UTL Acura. Work. So he's got a Honda. It's a Honda. So he needs to cut the. We use an air saw. Yeah. So to cut the doors. All right, we'll come back to the six mile. So yeah. to cut the doors, we use an air saw. Yeah. Just, you know, that's. That's it. That's it. Uh, buy you uh, speaker adapters. Put it on, and Sharpie. whatever is on the metal, just cut it. Now, all else being equal, six and a half for a six by nine. There is no such thing as all else being equal in most cases. Very few companies make a six by nine in the caliber of their high-end speaker. One that I can think of off the top of my head is Alpine. Alpine has six and a halfs and six by nines in every one of them. So S, R, and X all have those components. So if we're doing a car that has a six by nine and we're doing an Alpine system, then yeah, we would go with the six by nine. However, in, in the rest of the world, like the ultim uh, the the Morel six by nine component set, it's a beautiful set. Nowhere near in the price point of like an Elate though. So if I have an Elate six and a half and I have a Tempo six by nine, that Tempo six by nine though is amazing and mm -hmm. fun and oh, it's bye 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 bye. Because that Tempo is gonna kill. I'm I'm sorry, not the Tempo. That um, Elate is going to just just destroy it. So. When we're looking at building a system like Focal, they don't make a six by nine high end. And if we're doing a set of flax, we're gonna do a six and a half. Um, other things to think about too is going to an eight. So if we're looking at like an Elate, Elate makes an eight. Yeah. They make a nine. Um, and so some of the manufacturers that make these exotic speakers also make a bigger eight inch or nine inch that will fit where the six by nine is. Not in all cases, some of the cases. But a lot, most of the time what happens, like if you're doing an F-150, even though we could fit an eight there, most people aren't going up to an eight because they are like, wow. Um, so, and Flax doesn't make an eight and neither do like the Virtus or the hybrids. So those are where a lot of people buy those speakers. And so we're going with the six and a half. All right. That six and a half puts out a ton of mid bass. All right. Okay. Uh, what do you think about retro sounds? Thank you, Ray, for the five bucks, man. We had one guy that about every six months, he would show up with a classic car and a box from Retro Sound, and we'd put it in. All right. And it worked fine, and it did exactly what it was supposed to do, and that was our experience. About every six months, we'd just, card come in, we'd put the Retro Sound radio in it, pull out the piece of crap, and he'd be on his way. He kept doing that for like three or four years until I think he finally may have passed away because he was an old dude. Um, but we never had a problem and he kept buying them. So I'm assuming they worked and did what they needed to do. All right, uh, Oscar. Yes. Thank you for the pipe box, man. What do you think about the six channel Kenwood amplifier to power inside speakers and using the JBL Bass Pro Hub in the trunk? Yeah, that would awesome. totally work. That'd be, that'd be phenomenal. The whole idea behind that amplifier, which is the one we're talking about over here on the wall, that one, is that it has four outputs to do whatever you want. So what we'll do is we'll either use it as a six channel amplifier in the sense tweeter, mid-range, rear, three-way active set with rear outboard amplifier and some form of a subwoofer. But yeah, that is the way to go. All right, again, uh, if you, the amplifier doesn't fit. The gloves don't fit, man, you gotta equip. You have to put it somewhere else. If you, we have a video, then probably that's what you say, uh, the video is two years old. If you, we have a video that says, maybe you have a different car, or something was different. If you, right. we able to put the, the amplifier in there is because that was nothing in there. We didn't move anything. Nothing. So if there was, if there, it, it's, it's pretty simple. And I mean, honestly, when, when, I definitely recommend you to just go somewhere else. Somewhere else so you don't have any problems with your seat. That's it. Meaning put it somewhere else. Not yeah, put it somewhere else. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another nice place to put it in the Hondas or the Honda Acuras is in the side and the, the rear. I mean, they, it's, 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 there's lots of room in the trunk. Um, the seat, no same, no same car, same setup. If it fit, it fit. Right. Do you have the same amp? If you have the same amp, exactly. It's just like if you watch the video and we did it. It's because it fit. Because it, it fit. We didn't, if it doesn't, we didn't do anything magical. Yeah. And that's all I got to say. Because we, we didn't, didn't do nothing crazy. Yeah. Okay. So, 
Oh man, now now I want to watch the video. Yeah, yeah, you gotta go watch it. And yeah, it out. maybe maybe you can. Talk okay, to so him. listen, maybe if you chime in on Monday, oh, you'll go uh, watch the video. I'll, I'm week. gonna watch the video right, and I will let you know. I will not be. <laughs> um, how much power do you suggest running to the Morel Maximo 602 V2s? Do you think the two-channel audio control ACM is enough? Yes, I do. And by the way, those are an awesome deal on speakers. So if you want to get into Morels and you want the premium sound of Morel offos, the Maximos or the Maximus mm -hmm. are phenomenal value and great performance. Um, we, I was just putting the system together. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Some aftermarket touchscreens had units provide ability to control everything. The stock touchscreen had unit control such as a climate control, I'm on live backup camera, etc. 2011H. Go there to maestro.idatalink.com. That is maestro.idatalink.com. Type in your make, model, and year. If there is an adapter to do exactly what you asked. They are going to be the company that makes it. That's what they do. You'll have to buy a radio that is iData Link compatible, which a lot of them are, most of them are, in order to do that. But yes, that's that's what they do. Is they retain the steering wheel controls, they retain the air conditioning controls, they retain the tire pressure sensors, they retain uh, door lock features. So if like you hit unlock and it locks the driver, hit it again and it does the passenger. All those things are built into an iData. They talk to the data bus in the car and they move that stuff into the radio. So if there is one available for it, that's who's going to make it. All right. Let's, let's probably finish with an audio control question. I have a D61200. Can I use the front channel 1 and 2 high, 3 and 4 from speaker inputs and the 5 and 6 from RCA signal inputs? Yes, you can from high but no you can you just gotta you just gotta gain match so as long as you gain match you're fine um do i need to use a base processor with a pioneer 490 or it does have it built into it a base processor uh, i mean it doesn't have an epicenter it doesn't have an epicenter it has a super for control but if you want if you want like if you want bass, yeah. it has bass boost, which is kind of like yeah, a but... really generic version of bass restoration. Mm -hmm. But if you want something that is actually, then you're going to yeah. want an epicenter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, an amplifier if you don't have an amplifier for the subwoofer. All right, guys, we're going to end on this. As 25 Hertz to Life says, get kettle chips. Oh, I hate them. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in this Saturday. You guys have been wonderful. Let's head over here. And if, for some reason, you guys would like to use the cool tools that we use when we do our installs, like meters and probes and RTAs and fun stuff like that, head over to, not there, here, dnftooldrawer.com. dnftooldrawer.com is the place where we put all this stuff at, so it makes all your questions easy and your tools fun to find. Yes. If you want to wear a cool five-star swag, you can head over to teespring.com. Go teespring.com slash store slash five-star or just search for five-star car stereo. Of course, hoodies and all that other fun stuff. We'd like to thank Audio Control for being a sponsor of the show this week. If you missed the beginning of the show, make sure you head over to Audio Control and check them out. This is the new LC 5.1300. Go back and watch the beginning of the show where we talked about some of the cool save features and setting it up and programming in your BT24 so that it works with your amplifier. Mm -hmm. And it's Saturday, which means... It's Saturday. Yeah. I don't even know what that means anymore for the world. I mean, it's like nothing cool going on anymore. So, uh, you guys have a great Valentine's Day tomorrow if that's the kind of thing that you do. I've ordered some pizzas in the shape of hearts for the girls. That's about the extent of my Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. um, not a fan. <sighs> Monday, we'll be back here, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, over on Facebook, doing the Facebook Live show where we answer more of your questions. And that's it. Instagram, Patreon, yes. we're there. You guys have a wonderful night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Oh, and remember, Uber, Lyft, they're cheap. If you decide to go somewhere tonight and, and get smashed, don't drive home. Put on a mask, sit in the back seat, and let them drive you there. It's well worth the money. It's so much cheaper than a lawsuit or yeah. you know, death. Um, have a great weekend, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.